that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he does something to you. He intends to make philanthropists out of all of you. Holy Ghost of God in the earth today. Holy Ghost of God in the earth today. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstraught. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. Well, as you know, I'm going to be talking about the Holy Ghost and him being God in the earth today. And knowing him is not optional. I'm going to be introducing him to you in a way that you might not know him yet but hopefully after tonight you will know him in this way are you ready for this he the holy ghost the living god god in the earth today the one the, the one that you're supposed to be walking around with the one that jesus sent he is the absolute wealthiest being in the universe He's the absolute wealthiest being that ever existed. Get that straight. There's nobody wealthier. There's no one who ever existed that was any wealthier than he is. If that's true, those things that I said, if you're going to be walking with the Holy Ghost, wealth is not optional. You let those words sink down into your innermost being. If you walk with the Holy Ghost, wealth is not optional third john verse 2 beloved i wish or pray sometimes if you look over in the margin of your bible there it'll say pray i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers now if we know that the holy ghost is the one that spoke these things through holy men of old because this is a scripture then it's his will above all things that you prosper and be in health what's the first thing that is his will for you the first thing that the holy ghost wills for you is that you prosper why would that be because he's a prosperous god if he was an impoverished god the most impoverished being that ever existed on the face of the earth or in the universe then his will for you would be to be impoverished i pray above all things that thou mayest be impoverished no above all things that thou mayest prosper if you're going to walk with the holy ghost wealth and prosperity is not an option so and then he goes on to say even as thy soul prospers you could say even to the degree that your soul prospers in knowing him well he's in you who's in you the wealthiest being that ever existed first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which you have of god talking about your body you have your body of god and you are not your own for you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in and in your spirit which are god's glorify the god that's in your body what god did it say was in your body holy ghost and glorify means to lift up magnify exalt worship the god that's in your body if the god that's in my body is the wealthiest being in the universe if you're going to glorify that god that god in my body then wealth is not an option so are you going to know this about him that god that's in your body now we could go down many roads here we know that he's a god of healing and he will heal you and that's good for your body say that's good for my body but then we a lot of people don't want to know this about him that he's a wealthy god and they don't want to know that about him in their body but wealth is good for your body 
are you here so we are going to know this about him now it says what know you not that you are the temple now if we're the temple then our temple should be representative of the God that's in our body we are a latter-day temple meaning we're in the end of the end days here so we're in the latter days we are the temple of the living God say I am the temple of the living God right well there was a former temple of God Haggai chapter 2 and then let's look at verse 7 and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and and I will fill this house say this house with glory now he said glorify God in your body and your body is the temple right he will fill that he he will fill this house which now is you with glory say he will fill this house with glory and we're talking about you right can you see this you're the latter-day house so we'll read on here verse 8 the silver is mine and the gold is mine saith the Lord of hosts the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former house so you are the latter-day house and he is going to make the glory in this house this latter-day house greater he's going to make it greater he is going to make it greater than the former house now do we know anything about the former house former house we were talking about solomon's temple and we all know that solomon's temple was one of the wealthiest places there could possibly be and it wasn't because of solomon it was a be it was because of the god that was in the temple that blessed solomon we'll get into this in a minute unless you get religious when he says the i will fill that say fill fill this house with glory verse 8 says the silver is mine and the gold is mine i'm quite convinced that that verse 8 is there just to keep you from being religious about the glory that he's talking about that is going to be filling the temple some people don't like to hear messages like this but you need to hear messages like this if you're gonna learn how to walk with the Holy Ghost there's certain things that he requires of you imagine that a God that moves into a place and requires something of the place Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him who was with Jesus the Holy Ghost was with him now we know many things about the healing of all that were oppressed of the devil but let's look at this word here how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about say went about went about doing good a lot of people will just look over that because the healing was so impressive he healed them all many times right but he went about so in his going about say in his going about he was all the time doing good say doing good now doing good means benefiting people wherever he went he benefited them he performed kind service this kind service would include good deeds to people are you here it wasn't just healing all that were oppressed of the devil if you look up this word it means to be philanthropic to be a philanthropist how anointed Jesus of Nazareth God the Holy Ghost with power who went about being a philanthropist now Jesus couldn't be a philanthropist if he didn't have something with which to give people are you here 
how did jesus become a philanthropist was by the holy ghost and the power that the holy ghost gave him the holy ghost gave him power to be a philanthropist now if you remember when judas got up from the last supper remember he got up and he, he left the room and everybody was like where's he going and they said oh he's probably going to give some money to the poor because judas was the one who held the treasury or the purse why would they just assume that he was getting up to go give something to the poor because it happened all the time part of what jesus was anointed to do was to be a philanthropist some people are getting this right now and it makes me extremely happy god the holy ghost anointed jesus to be a philanthropist and to heal so when the holy ghost comes upon you he does something to you he intends to make philanthropists out of all of you listen the holy ghost on you and in you makes you and his will is and intent is to make you a philanthropist receive that believe that a holy ghost philanthropist say i'm a holy ghost philanthropist now why would the holy ghost be doing something like that because he's extremely wealthy and it's one way he does things are you getting this and if you are his temple he's going to be doing that through you that glorifies him say that glorifies him you being a philanthropist he says to you i will take you there listen hear that with the ears of your spirit i will take you there where you say into being a philanthropist does that sound good is that good news i'm preaching the good news in order to give and to give big say give big then i'm going to have to have big to give you're blessed to be a blessing you got to be blessed first question was jesus a philanthropist before the holy ghost came on him remember in acts 10 38 god anointed him and then after the holy ghost came on him anointed him with power he went about doing the things that the holy ghost would have him do which was that's when he entered into the ministry of philanthropy never said that before in my life did you get it so was jesus a philanthropist before the holy ghost came on him no certainly not in the way that he was afterwards because he went about doing that he makes you a blessing and in order to be a blessing you must first be blessed say in order to be a blessing i must first be blessed so jesus was jesus blessed when the holy ghost came on him oh yeah so god anointed jesus and he went about doing good philanthropy now listen when money comes to you and it will i didn't say if when money comes to you and it shall thou shalt not be a tightwad thou shalt learn to give because this is part of what the holy ghost is anointing you to do say he's anointing me to give he he's an unending and everlasting resource will just keep bringing more to you you don't want to stop that up by not giving are you here say when money comes to me i shall give and i shall not be a tightwad talking about being a holy ghost philanthropist <laughs> yeah glory to god forever psalms 112 verse 1 praise ye the lord blessed is the man that fears the lord does that say blessed or cursed blessed is the man that fears the lord that delights greatly in his commandments 
his seed shall be mighty where upon the earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever shall be wealth and riches shall be in whose house the one that fears the Lord and whose house is it it's his house unto the upright verse 4 there arises light in the darkness he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous verse 9 he hath dispersed he hath given to the poor his righteousness endures forever what did this sound like it sounded like this man was blessed and he was a blessing and able to give to the poor are you here what is another word for that philanthropy say I am a Holy Ghost philanthropist now I will just quote a couple things to you you got Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 where God was blessing Abraham he says I'm gonna bless you and you're gonna be a blessing he's gonna bless him and he's gonna be a blessing what came first the chicken or the egg the chicken came first and then the golden egg you understand this Proverbs 29 2 says when the righteous rule the people are glad why would the people be glad because they are blessed by the blessing that's on the righteous it's a myth that it takes money to make money it doesn't take money to make money it takes revelation especially when we're talking about Holy Ghost money and Holy Ghost blessing and Holy Ghost philanthropy we're going to get this revelation from the Holy Ghost it takes revelation the Holy Ghost on you will cause you to have revelation to be blessed and to be a blessing <laughs> real wealth comes out of the spirit comes out of the Holy Ghost R real say real wealth comes out of the spirit comes out of the Holy Ghost real wealth comes from heaven remember Jesus talked about this a little bit he said lay not treasures for yourself up on earth where uh, where moth and rust doth corrupt but lay it up in heaven well, what good would it do if it just oh, lay it up until you get to heaven? he didn't say lay it up until you get to heaven he was trying to show you a way to get wealth out of heaven see a lot of people don't know how to access it I'm gonna be talking about it a little bit tonight did having money make Solomon rich was it just because he had money I'm talking about people that think it takes money to make money was it having money that made Solomon rich no it was the power of God on him and the presence of God that made Solomon rich I hope you're getting this Solomon was the former temple what are we the latter-day temple and we're gonna do it better say we're gonna do it better second Chronicles chapter 1 I could read a lot of this but we'll just we'll just cut to the chase this is where Solomon was praying and he was saying oh God help me I'm a king I'm young I don't know what to do verse 10 give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this thy people that is so great so after he prayed this a spirit came to him the spirit of wisdom so was it just money that made Solomon one of the wealthiest people on earth no who was it it was the Holy Ghost coming to Solomon that made him say made him the wealthiest person on earth at that time 
former temple latter temple same Holy Ghost so he comes first he is the cause of great wealth the Holy Ghost in your life is the cause of great wealth say the Holy Ghost in my life is the cause of great wealth if you get to know him that way and that's what we're doing we're talking about him would you like another verse of scripture yes brother Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 ho everyone that thirsts come ye to the waters say the waters and he that has no money huh well look at that that's good and he that has no money come ye buy and eat yea come buy wine and milk without money and without price he said if you come to the waters you wouldn't need the money to be able to start buying things are you getting this it's not the money that makes money it's the waters you could say in this verse of scripture that gave you the ability to increase John chapter 7 verse 37 in the last day the great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst remember we're talking about waters come ye to the waters let him come unto me and drink verse 38 he that believes on me as the scriptures hath said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive For the Holy Ghost was not yet given but Jesus because Jesus was not yet glorified but that was in that day in our day the Holy Ghost was given so he was speaking of the Spirit of God when he was talking about living waters the fact is he the Holy Ghost intends to give you things I hope, I'm saying so many things tonight if you can hear them you can have them the Holy Ghost intends to give you things say the Holy Ghost intends to give me things first Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the Living God who gives us richly all things who are you trusting in who's the God that's in you as a temple of God the Living God the Holy Ghost he intends to give you richly all things say richly all things do you know him as a God who gives you richly all things I'm trying to help you out here the fact is he intends to give you all things I should have put down there richly all things say richly all things sometimes you got to speak these words out of your mouth so that it imprints on your head first Corinthians chapter 2 talking about knowing the Holy Ghost as the spirit of philanthropy first Corinthians chapter 2 let's look at verse 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect now remember Solomon got some wisdom right and we can trace that back to where he really began to take off in wealth how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor are the princes of this world that come to naught. verse 7 but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery and later on we can I can prove that later on we're really talking about speaking in other tongues which is speaking as the Spirit gives you utterance here he calls it a mystery we speak the wisdom of God I'm speaking in tongues in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory he ordained this language for you to speak to cause you to be going from glory to glory but it's for your glory glorify God the Holy Ghost the wealthiest being in the universe in your body and when you speak in other tongues he is doing it for your glory 
so that he can be glorified in you he intends to give you things verse 12 i hope you're still here now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things also we speak not in words of man's wisdom teaches but which the holy ghost teaches we're talking about speaking out the things in other tongues but we have received the spirit holy ghost that we might know the things luke chapter 6 verse 38 give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured unto you again now I've been talking a lot of things this evening and you have to decide how far you want to go say how far I want to go how far do you think God wants to go he said the silver is mine the gold is mine the glory of this latter temple will be greater than the former that's how far he wants to go you need to decide how far you want to go in it well here I think we can see you got good measure pressed down those all sound good shaking together that sounds pretty good and running over that would be the best right running over say running over running over that means too much if you have a cup and it's running over it's too much for the cup well if it's too much for the cup what are you gonna do with the stuff that runs over give it out do you see what's happening here God wants to make you Holy Ghost wants to make you and intends to make you a Holy Ghost philanthropist so that you have not just enough good measure pressed down and shake it together but running over this is where your faith should be this is where you should start seeing yourself and going says the Spirit of God this is where you should know me as one who pours out so much you have too much and it's running over but you have to start small Zechariah 4 verse 10 says despise not the days of small beginnings give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together running over the giving you can start out small say start out small where one day when I become super wealthy I'll become a philanthropist no you are now with the Holy Ghost a philanthropist you will go about doing good you go you'll go about doing philanthropy and it starts out small <laughs> a lot of you heard that Galatians chapter 6 verse 6 let him that is taught in the word communicate or give unto him that teaches in all good things verse 7 be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap for he that sows to his flesh shall of, shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting as we have therefore opportunity let us do good let us do good as we have therefore opportunity the opportunities don't have to be huge they could be small opportunities and you need to learn how to do them when they're small so that you can increase until it's running over is this making sense as we have therefore opportunity let us do good philanthropy unto all men but especially unto them who are of the household of faith so we see here that part of this giving whoever sows to the spirit 
right we're sowing money we're giving we're doing good we're doing philanthropy it's a spiritual thing that's happening say it's a spiritual thing that's happening and we're sowing to the spirit and then we're of the spirit this spirit that i've been talking about the holy ghost hey wake up the spirit this holy ghost that we've been talking about is the one who's going to begin to bless you and increase you because that's who he is sowing to him is sowing to the spirit look at what he says here let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all things he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap he specifically qualifies one of the places to sow is to him that teaches in all good things he calls that giving sowing to the spirit why is that because the person who is teaching is teaching from the spirit and we know that he moves upon people to teach such things and when you sow into those things they come upon you and many a times remains on you so we see then as we have opportunity let us do good or be philanthropists unto all men but he specifically said sowing to those who teach in all good things is sowing to the spirit but he also says do good philanthropy to all good men i'll tell you of this this one little thing that happened to me this last week i was in the line at the grocery store and i was paying for my my groceries the stuff i was eating and i was eating some nice stuff and I looked back on the on the belt behind me and I saw some sad food say sad food I mean it was all the generic stuff and I'm not at least I'm not talking that there's anything wrong with generic things but when I what I saw on that belt was sad to me and it looked like the person who was putting it there was could could use some financial help say financial help well according to this right says you know I'm I should be looking for an opportunity to be a blessing to all men I kind of quickly added up what I could see there on the on the belt you know some like cans of soup and some sad cheese and you know things like that I quickly added it up in my head what I thought it would be and as I paid for mine and I finally was about ready to pick up my bags I took out my wallet and I took the amount that I thought would cover it and I I just handed it to the cashier and I said here pay this pay for this guy behind me and then I quickly left before anybody could say stop don't do that but I was looking say looking for an opportunity to be a blessing I'm looking for it all the time I'm looking for that say I'm looking for it all the time why because it's part of what I do I go about doing good of course and healing all that are oppressed of the devil but the doing good was the first thing he talked about just like I would that you prosper and be in health do good and heal same Holy Ghost are you getting this it's not a side issue wealth is not a side issue it's part and parcel of who the Holy Ghost is because he's the wealthiest being in the universe Proverbs 10 22 says the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it say the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and he adds no sorrow with it it becomes my duty to receive that promise I must have it if I am going to be a Holy Ghost philanthropist which if you if you've made it this far in this message that is what God is speaking to you about he wants you to be a Holy Ghost philanthropist then you must have this blessing on you because it's the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich it's not the money you have right now are you here so I must have this blessing say I must have this blessing because it's the blessing of the Lord that makes 
me rich it's the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich I must have it I must own it I must believe it you remember Jacob when he wrestled with the angel wrestled all night long what was he wrestling for the blessing he had to have it say he had to have it it's this blessing that makes you rich that empowers you to be a blessing if you're blessed you can be a blessing if you're not blessed then you can't be a blessing I must be blessed in order for that blessing to come on other people it's part of why it says those who teach in good things that that is when you sow to that you're sowing to the spirit because that blessing comes on you and the words I'm saying I can tell they go out of me with a certain amount of spiritual force and into the people into the hearer and it affects change in them that's why I say personally I must be blessed I must have this blessing so that when I speak that blessing can come on other people are you here and just like I've done this so many times just like when I am moved to give I give all the time I'm always giving I'm looking for opportunities to give but there are times when the Spirit of the Lord moves on me to give sometimes I'm writing out a check to a ministry and I write out the wrong number and I'm like <laughs> that is hilarious because I never write out a smaller number I and you know and, and I'm like okay we'll go with it or the Spirit of the Lord will move upon me to give and I'm thinking what how am I gonna uh, I need that money I've been in places where I needed money to pay for something and I didn't have enough money and I love it I'm telling you I love it almost more than anything when the Spirit of God comes on me and inspires me to give the money that I needed for something else because when he inspires me I know that connected to it say connected to it is a blessing that causes me to go well beyond and have a running over blessing because it wasn't my money that made me rich having it not having it it was the blessing that came on me when I gave but I've been in places where I had zero dollars or certainly not enough and then when money came in I was able to sow the whole thing say so the whole thing knowing that the blessing was attached to it and all my needs were met does that sound like God oh that's God on every level well so it is just like when I moved upon to give I hope you can hear this Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you this just like when I am moved to give and I am blessed meaning the blessing is on me so it is with those who are moved to give to me this may sound self-serving but I need to say it anyway those who are moved to give to me and my partners in particular are blessed with that same blessing it comes on them with no sorrow added it is on them right now that blessing is on them right now and no sorrow added and I refuse to insult the Holy Ghost by saying anything else other than that about my partners and I thank you Holy Ghost for blessing them and if you do have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost I thank you that I am blessed with the blessing that comes on me and makes me rich and I shall be the Holy Ghost philanthropist that you've called me to be and listen the Spirit of the Lord would say to you great things are beginning to take shape in you and on you and around you and the days ahead shall be great 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 so look up and don't look back and don't look behind for I am leading you into the best places into the wealthiest places and you shall be blessed 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 
We thank you for it, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen.